Hi, and welcome to the course introduction for the ITIL Continual Service Improvement course. I'm going to be referring to this as CSI as we go through the course. My name is Helen Morris, and I'm going to be your instructor. Please bear with me while I read out the registered trademarks and copyrights for the course. This is a legal requirement, so please be patient while I go through these. ITIL is a registered trademark of the Cabinet Office in the United Kingdom and other countries. IT Infrastructure Library is a registered trademark of the Cabinet Office and other countries. The Swirl logo is a trademark of the Cabinet Office. Crown Copyright 2011 20, diagrams have been reproduced under licence from the Cabinet Office. More registered trademarks and copyrights. PMBOK, the Project Management Body of Knowledge, is owned and authored by the 2011 Project Management Institute. COBIT is a registered trademark of the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, ISACA, and ITGI, the IT Governance Institute. PRINCE2 is a registered trademark of the Cabinet Office in the United Kingdom and other countries. CMMI is registered in the US Patent and Trademark Office by Carnegie Mellon University. SCAMPI is a service mark of Carnegie Mellon University. Motorola and Six Sigma are registered trademarks of Motorola Inc. Thank you for bearing with me through that long list. I'm now going to tell you a little bit about the course description. The course itself builds on the principles that you've discovered in your ITIL Foundation, which of course you've had to take and pass before you can start this course. It covers the life cycle aspects of continual service improvement, CSI. This is from a managerial or supervisory perspective. So we're looking at the life cycle stage and understanding how to make it work and how to, make, uh, how to manage CSI efficiently and effectively. It includes the principles of CSI, the activities and technology considerations that we need to have in place to make sure that our continual improvement works effectively. It gives us an overview of the CSI process. And you will have met that in your foundation, so in this course you're going to discover a little bit more about it and gain some more detail. We also look at the interfaces between CSI and the other stages of the service life cycle. So we'll see how CSI affects the whole of our service life cycle in the ITIL framework. The objectives of the course are for you to gain understanding and competencies in various areas. And the first one is to make sure that you understand what CSI is all about, so we cover an introductory stage. We then move on from our introduction into the principles of CSI, the guiding, the guiding rules and regulations, if you like, that in, allow us to carry out CSI effectively in our organisations. We then start to look at the improvement process itself. So we'll look in some detail about the steps that, it that are carried out and how you go about making sure that those are effective. We also look at improvement methods and techniques. So by the end of the course, you'll have understood and gained some experience in how to apply all of those things. We'll also look at some other areas, like how you organise yourselves for delivering continual service improvement. This isn't going to tell you how to structure your IT department, but it is going to give you some handy hints on the sort of organisation you require to make it work effectively. We'll look at the technology that we use. So we'll look at tools and monitoring systems and metrics that we might put in place to make sure CSI works well. We look at the implementation considerations for CSI how you start to use CSI in your organisation to make a real difference. And we look at the critical success factors and risks, the things that help us deliver effectively and well. In order to take the course, you must have passed your ITIL Foundation Certificate. We also recommend, in fact, you should really have this book with you while you do the course, is that you read the ITIL CSI publication. We also recommend that you have some experience in IT service management. Because this is a managerial course, it's really not appropriate if you've only just started in IT. The topics we're going to cover in the CSI course are as follows. First of all, we look at an introduction to CSI. And here we'll set out the stall for what we're going to cover. We look at the approach to CSI that's adopted in most organisations and provide some recommendations on how you might like to do this. 
We look at the interfaces that CSI has with the rest of the life cycle stages, and this is a critical part of our continual service improvement methodology. We look at the, pro the principles behind service improvement, and we understand how those can be implemented in your organisation. We look at the process, the seven-step process that enables us to process our information effectively so that improvements can be made efficiently and well. We look at the methods and techniques that you can adopt to ensure that continual service improvement becomes embedded in the culture of your organisation. We also consider how you organise yourselves for CSI, so what sort of skills you need and what sort of people you need to have in place. We look at the technology, the tools, the service management tools and monitoring systems to help us deliver CSI effectively. We look at how you can implement continual service improvement in your organisation and give some recommendations on the best way to do this. We also consider the critical success factors and risks, so the things that we need in place to ensure that CSI works effectively. And finally, last but not least, we look at the exam preparation that you're going to need to do to pass the examination at the end of the course. This course leads you to a qualification, and the examination that you're going to take is managed by an exam board. The exam board ensures that the ITIL trainers and materials used have been fully accredited. So I've been checked out. I work. I've been proven. For each ITIL course, they make sure that they have a set course syllabus. So as we go through the course, you will be following the guidance that's been set out by the examination board. We, they also set the length of time for the course itself, so the number of hours of study you take has been set out carefully as part of the syllabus. For each examination, they also set the style of the multiple choice questions you're going to tackle. They look at the content of the exam and they also uh, regulate the pass marks. They issue the results to you, so when you take your examination, this is a really formal route that you're going through. Here on this slide, we're going to show you the curriculum path that you can follow for ITIL qualifications. If you already possess some of the ITIL V2 qualifications, then what you can see is the way that you can achieve the same path as the people who are doing V3. But we're going to concentrate on V3 for you. We start with our ITIL Foundation course, the course that you've taken and must pass before you can move into the intermediate stage. And on here, you can see the various modules that we have. We have life cycle and capability modules. For each of the life cycle stages, you can see that you can have a course on each of the life cycle stages itself. And this is the one you're doing, continual service improvement. This is where we look at the management of this particular stage and how to make it work effectively in your organisation. Supporting these, we have the capability courses, operational support and analysis, planning protection and optimization, release control and validation, and service offerings and agreements. These courses are based around the processes, and they take the aspects from the various life cycle stages and look at them in a more practical, detailed way. So, life cycle modules are for managerial and supervisory control, and capability modules are for practitioners who are carrying out the activities. All of these courses are then topped off by a course called Managing Across the Life Cycle. Managing Across the Life Cycle is a mandatory course if you wish to gain the qualification of ITIL Expert. Topping that off, we have a qualification called ITIL Master. That's still in beta testing at the moment, so I can't tell you an awful lot more about that at this time. As you go through the course, you'll find that there are various exercises to help you practice the techniques that you've learnt and apply in a practical manner the information that you've gained. You can download these from the download section on the course page. If you have any questions throughout the course, then we provide a question and comment box, so you can put your question in and an ITIL expert will reply to you as soon as possible. And if you're ready, let's get started.